Good evening, freaks and friends, and welcome to Math Bites. I'm your host, Math Machine, and today I got two pieces of news that uh, I saw one last night, one uh, just a little bit ago, and I found them both pretty interesting, and I'm going to be talking uh, a little bit about each of them. The first thing, and I saw this just uh, today, a little bit ago, and uh, it was that uh, King Video Games the people who have made Candy Crush. And if you don't know what Candy Crush is, where the fuck have you been? Well, <clears throat> the people who made Candy Crush uh, just got put on the stock market. And uh, in total, every bit of stock that they have, all added together, is $7 billion. $7 million because they made a bejeweled clone. What the fuck is wrong with you people? Seven billion dollars for fucking Candy Crush? Oh, and uh, the Pet Rescue Saga and Farm Hero Saga or whatever. What? They're bejeweled. They're bejeweled clones. They're pretty crappy bejeweled clones. But, like, how is that company valued at seven billion dollars? A company that has copyrighted the word candy for any use in video gaming. It's unreal. It's worth seven... I don't even... What I saw that and I thought that it was just a joke. Like, I thought that somebody was fucking with me. But no, it's, it's really worth seven billion dollars. Granted... At the end of the day, their stock dropped a good 18%. Happy day. But I figure uh, at the end of the day, like probably a couple weeks, month or two, the stock price will even out so that it's back at where it started again, kind of like with uh, Facebook. When Facebook opened, they had the largest opening of any company in the history of the stock market. And then uh, when the day ended, they had the largest drop of any one single company in the history of the stock market. That's always fun. But now Facebook's prices have actually bounced back since then, and they are actually worth more than uh, what they uh, started as when they first launched on NASDAQ. And that kind of surprised me. In, in one aspect, because I never expected Facebook to do well that uh, that well on the stock market, but apparently investors think it is. Uh, we'll probably see a huge difference like five years from now, unless things really change. But uh, I figure that that's that's uh, that's not going to be something that lasts long. Like these things are going to just plummet, and I will not be shocked if King Games continues to go down further. But then. Goes right back up again, because investors, woohoo! Uh, we know everything. We will influence everything. I, I hate the stock market. Seven billion dollars. Oy vey. Now the other bit of news is uh, that uh, Disney has bought something again. At this point, that should come as a shock to no one. The Disney is out there buying shit. <laughs> Why? Because they can. We're at Disney. We have billions of dollars just sitting around, and we can only swim through it so many times. We gotta buy shit. Uh, or else, what are what else are we supposed to do? I, it still amazes me how this company has uh, so much disposable income on their hands that they feel the need to basically buy anything that moves or exists because they can. What they bought this time, uh, I believe it's called Maker Studios. Uh, I may have the name slightly wrong, but uh, to, to give you an idea, uh, it's a YouTube thing. It's specific to YouTube, and I had to double check and triple check through a few different sources because I saw this article and I was like, that doesn't seem right. But I checked through a few sources, and yes, they really did do this. 
The way YouTube works is a lot of these bigger YouTube channels, they are sponsored, well, not sponsored, but they're, they're, they're kind of like under the umbrella of a network. And what a network is, basically, it's uh, uh, the hub of all these different channels. Like, uh, the, all these different channels exist in their own space, but then when, like, copyright claims or lawsuits are brought against them, it goes back to the network, who is sort of like the parent of all of these. And uh, they are the ones that, they, that these channels go to in case of emergencies uh, such as that. And uh, uh, above that, uh, there's like a pool of three or four different networks that are all gathered together in this one company. It's called Maker Studios. And what Disney did is they just bought Maker just completely for $500 million. I'll let that sink in for a second. YouTube basically bought the rights for getting all of the like company ad revenue money from I'm sorry Disney bought the ad revenue money basically from YouTube channels and here's the clincher between maker and then all of its divisions and then all the subdivisions they're in that was 55,000 channels 55,000 channels that's a that's a damn load of YouTube content they just bought up. They didn't buy the channel specifically. What they did was the their maker studios basically got the profits from the ad revenue because each individual person got their own cut of it, but then the networks got their cut, and then the higher-ups got their cut, and then maker studios at the end got a, the largest chunk of the pie. So now Disney gets that largest chunk of the pie. And I was sitting here thinking, I'm not sure exactly what, uh, in, God, uh, what in God's name uh, Disney is thinking they can do with this. But then I realized, oh, wait. It's, what Disney's probably going to do is they saw how profitable YouTube is right now. I say right now because <laughs> who knows how long this lasts. And they decided to buy it because we just released Pocahontas from the Disney vault and we had fucking billion dollars just lying around. Gotta spend it! And uh, so the, the, uh, I figured that they, can, they see this as profitable and they're going to just let them do as they have been doing. Because Disney, up until about three years ago, they had this philosophy of, we will buy your shit, but we will only make, we will only take the profit money from it. That we're only trying to get a, a get a buck from it. You just keep doing whatever the fuck you were doing before, and keep making us that buck. Disney owns ESPN. People don't seem to realize that, and I love telling people that because it just blows their fucking minds. Disney owns ESPN. Take a look at that, and then tell me, has Disney really ever interfered with that? I have never once seen Mickey Mouse uh, commentating over a basketball game. So I think the, the, that channel's good. Uh, Disney bought Marvel uh, about three years ago. Nothing's happened with that. All that's come of that is that they have Marvel has Disney's giant umbrella of money over them. So if Marvel ever goes, oh, we're stepped for cash, we're stepped for cash, help! Disney's like, okay, we'll release uh, Aladdin from the vault. We'll give you five hundred million. <laughs> and uh, that and uh, what? Uh, but it's good and it's bad because. They also recently bought Lucas, not the person, obviously. Well, they kind of did, but uh, they bought basically everything that he has ever trademarked or copyrighted or has been uh, his sort of intellectual property. They bought Lucas Arts. They bought Lucas Studio. They bought Lucas Film. They bought everything. Just one clean sweep. Back at just two years ago, I think, uh, maybe not even that long. 
uh, and uh, did th they did that because Star Wars, for only having been, well, I say only, for having been six films, and Lucas really not doing much else with it, it has made an ungodly amount of money just from products, action figures, toys, uh, uh, costumes, anything with the name Star Wars. It, it's just insanely profitable. It, I, I looked at a chart like from five years ago, and it is, it's, it's mind-boggling numbers. It really is. And uh, Disney bought that uh, uh, because, well, Lucas himself really wasn't doing anything with it anymore. And if anybody knows Lucas, uh, it, when, Lu when you tell Lucas, I want to write you a big-ass check, Lucas is all like, give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money. <laughs> there has not been a dollar that Lucas has ever turned down. I don't remember exactly how much they bought uh, Lucas. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say Lucas for the sake of my sanity because I don't want to list off every goddamn thing again. I don't uh, know exactly how much they bought Lucas for. It was some ungodly large billion again. But uh, see, the problem here with them buying Lucas is that what they did was they inherited a, a movie studio and they inherit that wasn't really doing anything and they inherited a game studio which they don't know how to work with I've said this before and I'll say it again Disney do can't do shit with games what they did was they clo pretty much immediately closed down uh, Lucas uh, arts that's the video game company uh, granted Lucas arts hadn't been really doing anything they had a like a, a leaked demo, I, I, I use that term loosely, of a game, uh, Star Wars 1313. And it was like a two-minute demo trailer that was leaked. It wasn't even official. Uh, I think at one point uh, LucasArts said, yeah, we're working on that, but uh, I, that was just before they were bought. And... Uh, Uh, and what Disney did was they, they looked at it and they understandably said, you guys aren't profitable. We're going to shut you down. I can understand that because LucasArts, while being a great company in its heyday, wasn't really much of anything anymore. And it's a darn shame because they were a pretty good company. And uh, what they've become now is... They are, uh, the company is still open, but it's, it's, a, it's a skeleton crew, and their only purpose is basically just handling the paperwork involved with, uh, okay, you want to do a, a, a Lucas thing? Okay, you, you give me this paperwork, fill this out, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They're basically the bureaucrats of the, video, of the Lucas video game stuff. And uh, what they did was, and I don't like this, I, I can understand why they did it, because they didn't want to get involved with anything. Uh, big budget gaming. I don't get why exactly, because they made Epic Mickey 1 and 2, and both those games were AAA quality, and both those games were oh so good. They can do it. They just choose not to. Because the, the guy in charge of Disney Interactive, who I have said is stupid and will until my dying breath, he believes that the future of gaming is Facebook and mobile. You disgust me. That is not the future. That is, that is a sidetrack that is holding us back like five years. That shit is horrible. It's gotten better. Don't get me wrong. Well, except Facebook. That's actually degrading. Candy Crush. Good <laughs> callbacks. <laughs> but... So, they sold off the rights to all Star Wars video games, all of them, in their entirety, to EA. EA is now the sole company that can make Star Wars video games. 
if anybody knows EA, and when they heard this news, their immediate reaction, understandably, was, fuck. And mine was too. And mine <clears throat> still is, because while they are doing some things, we haven't really seen any fruits of their labor yet in a reasonable manner. And I hope that they can do some stuff because they actually signed it up to three key studios that have been known for being pretty good at what they do. But this is EA, and this is Star Wars. So if I knew EA, they are going to try and milk this sucker for everything it's worth. Microtransactions. So they did that, and then... When Disney also bought Lucas, they what they did was they said, "We want a new trilogy of Star Wars movies. We're, we're going to make this happen. We want you to do this. We are telling you to do this." And initially they said, "We don't really know if we can do this. This is you're kind of putting us on short notice." <laughs> Ooh. But they said, "You listen here, you little shits." You'll do this and you'll like it. Why? Because we can buy you. I'm pretty sure that's how the meeting went. So what happened was uh, they actually they haven't of they've they've officially started the movies now, like a pre pre production. But uh, back when they first announced that there was going to be an episode seven, eight, and nine. What happened was, uh, the first couple of months, they actually hired a team, not for any movie-related purposes, but to figure out exactly how long they could, because they were given a specific year. They were they were told, look, either you're going to release it in 2015, or we're just going to fucking cancel this all together. That's your, that's your two options. And in a lot of aspects, I wish that they had just not done it because you're forcing them to do it in a confined manner of time. That's never good for creativity and that's never good uh, for a product in general to rush it like that. But what happened was uh, they, they spent like a good month figuring out what the perfect time would be to give them the most amount of time and still be financially feasible for a release. And I believe it was December 21st, 2015 for some weird reason. I guess that that's like the last Friday before Christmas or something. Anyway, <clears throat> it's never good when Disney tries to force someone to do something or they try to get into whatever industry they buy. And when they just let them exist and do whatever they were doing, a la ESPN and Marvel, it, that's actually great. They end up doing fantastic. But when they try and uh, get them to actually do stuff, like with the Star Wars thing, I have serious doubts about. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be completely doom and against it until I start seeing stuff. But it's not good early signs. And now with this Maker Studios, I am of the firm opinion that they are going to just let them exist and take off the buck uh, from it that they, that they make. That's all they're going to do with it. If they actually try and throw their weight around and say, we want you guys to make some shows like this, that's really going to fuck up a lot of shit on YouTube because, like I said, it's 55,000 people. That doesn't sound like a lot until you realize that the enormity of the people that they actually got. Total Biscuit is one. That's like 2 million subscribers right there. Uh, they got anything dealing with Polaris. Uh, if you don't know, that's a lot of video game stuff. So that's that's Angry Joe. That's Game Grumps. That's uh, uh, Dodger. That's uh, Wow Crendor. A whole lot of really, really big names uh, in the video game scene of YouTube. Oh, and did I forget to mention the top uh, the top dog in YouTube himself, PewDiePie or PewDiePie? I've never 
figured out how to pronounce that name. And look, I don't care if you like him. I don't care if you hate him. I'm going to stay neutral on that point because I, just mentioning that name because of the massive amount of subscribers he has brings vitriol, and I'm trying to avoid that. He has, I believe at this moment, 22.5 million subscribers, give or take. A typical video of his gets 5 million views. He releases two a day. 10 million views in a day. Stop and think about that for a second. Disney is going to make a lot of money off these guys if they just let them continue to do what they do. But I, I have a fear that Disney is going to see how many people that these guys reach out to on a daily basis, and Disney's going to go, work with our shit, talk about our shit, do our shit. If they do that, they're going to screw themselves. And I really hope that they don't, because... Uh, that's going to drive content creators away, and you're going to see less less big name guys uh, doing the shit that we all enjoy. And shit, you end up seeing less guys like me who's just doing shit for shit's sake. Hopefully they don't, and I'm pretty sure they won't. But uh, as always, just be on the lookout for uh, stuff like this. Just keep an eye open, and, and also. Do me a favor. If you if you ever see anybody who works with Disney or has some knowledge of Disney or is a, a really big Disney fanboy, as I am. I'm, a, I'm an old school Disney fanboy. But if you know anybody related to Disney or any of their stuff, please tell them from me. Stop buying shit! This has been Math Machine saying... Please hope.